Okay, now we'll study what is known as polygon law of vector addition. Polygon law of vector addition is just derived, actually, is the outcome of triangular law of vector addition. Polygon law of vector addition says that if you have vectors forming n minus 1 sides of a polygon, then the resultant vector is the nth side of the polygon taken in the reverse order. If the vectors are arranged in anti-clockwise sense like this, then the resultant vector is in the clockwise sense like this. The nth side of the polygon in the reverse order. The polygon need, need not be a regular polygon. It could be of any sides of any side lengths. The point is you just have to complete the polygon in the reverse order and that will give you the resultant vector. Now this comes directly from the triangular law of vector addition. If we add these two vectors, let me name it as A vector, B vector, C vector and D vector. So what we are looking forward is the resultant of the summation of A, B, C and D vector. If we do it step by step using triangular law of vector addition, then A vector plus B vector in the triangular law of vector addition would be this vector. Now this vector plus C vector again in the triangular law of vector addition would be this vector. Now this vector and D vector again in the triangular law of vector addition would be this vector. It's nothing new. It's, it comes directly from the triangular law of vector addition. But sometime looking at it like a from the point of view of polygon law of vector addition things actually becomes a little bit easy to see and to infer. But nevertheless, this is the triangular law of vector addition which says that if there are n vectors taken in the same order forming n minus 1 sides of a polygon, then the resultant vector is the nth side of the polygon taken in the reverse order. So that's what the polygon law of vector addition is. Let's solve some problems to get handy with this. Suppose there are three vectors forming three consecutive sides of a rectangle A, B and C. Now can you draw the resultant of these three vectors? I'm sure you can and this must be a cakewalk for you. So, you the, as per the polygon law of vector addition that sum of three vectors is, uh, the, is, the, 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 is the fourth side. If you have a three vector then the resultant would be the fourth side of the polygon taken in the reverse order. Now you have taken it in anti-clockwise sense then the resultant vector would be just this taken in the reverse order. Now even if you didn't know about polygon uh, polygon law of vector addition you never heard of it you can you could have still done this. Vector A plus vector B is simply this vector and the resultant of A and B and C vector is simply this vector. In the triangular law of vector addition what we do is we arrange the vectors head to tail and this vector the resultant resultant of A and B and the C vector it has been arranged head to tail and now from tail to the head you join to get the resultant vector and this is the resultant vector. Right? So it's easy it's, it's nothing new. Let's solve the second problem. You remember previously I gave you this problem in which there were three vectors at an angle of 120 degree with respect to each other. And the magnitude suppose are equal, let's say A for all three vectors. And I ask you to find the resultant of these three vectors which we did and actually it came out as zero. Now I want you this time to think of it from the point of view of, a, of polygon law of vector addition and use directly polygon law of vector addition to show that the sum of these three vectors would be zero. So spend a minute on this and think of polygon law of vector addition and think of this problem and try and solve this particular problem from the point of view of polygon law of vector addition. Okay, now if you have, must, you must have attempted this and what you sh should have done is try and make a polygon out of these three vectors. So it is allowed for a vector to be shifted parallel to itself. If I shift this vector parallel to itself and bring here, 
it may look something like this and if I shift again this vector pull it backwards then it may look something like this fine so basically we have formed a triangle uh, and to prove that indeed we have formed a triangle what we should do is we should find this angle this angle would be 60 degree because we, ha we have just pulled this vector backwards so effectively it's just a straight line and these two angles are forming a linear pair so the sum of these two angles should be 180 degree so 120 and rest must be 60 degree so this angle is 60 degree if you think of this angle this angle uh, basically would be equal to this angle because these two lines are parallel and these would be alternate angles so this angle is actually just this angle and this angle is again 60 degree because if you think of uh, the angle made between these two vectors that is 120 degree and we have just extended this line backward so this angle and this complete angle are forming linear pair then again this is 60 degree and this is equal to this so this is 60 degree sum of the internal angles of a triangle is 180 degree so these two angles we have found out as 60 60 so this must also be 60 okay so it was forming a, it is it is forming an equilateral triangle actually and I mean what we could do is we could not we, we are not using that result that sum of the internal angle of a triangle is 180 degree we can independently find this angle as 60 degree as we have done for this case now this proves that the sum of the angles if that is 60 degree then these two lines these three lines must form a triangle because the sum of the internal angles of a triangle is 60 degree so it must be a triangle so what effectively we have proved is these three vectors are forming a closed polygon in this case it is a triangle now the polygon law of vector addition says the resultant of the vectors is the nth side of the polygon when we join the head and the tail of first and last vector taken in the reverse order now this is the first vector this is the second vector and this is the third vector now we have to join the head and tail of first and last vector but the head and tail of the first and last vectors are coinciding that means the line joining the head and tail would be of zero unit length so the magnitude of the vector would be zero so the resultant vector is zero the magnitude of the resultant vector is zero now this is a very important conclusion if the vectors are forming a closed polygon either it's a square or a triangle or a pentagon then the sum of the vector the resultant of the sum of the vectors is zero for in this case if we have a vector like this the four vectors are forming a closed polygon then the resultant of these four vectors would be zero and even if you apply triangular law of vector addition you will come to the same conclusion okay now this is important because later when we study work done then it becomes important 